Our pace of living leaves us little time for leisure. Our program will give you a chance to experience the fascinating world of traveling, extreme adventures, hunting and fishing. Each week we will take you to the most beautiful places of Kazakhstan. This amazing adventure into Kazakhstan's wildlife has started from one ordinary email message. Benjamin, young owner of a Belgian acrylic paint producing firm, has successfully hunted a lot of roe deers and European deers in Europe, but dreamed of a real wild hunt in the mountains. Whilst carefully studying all the information available on the internet, he's become inspired by the Siberian red deer hunt in Kazakhstan. Current demand for Siberian red deer hunting in the parks exceed offers. Hunting tours are booked one year in advance with non-refundable advance payment. Foreign guests arrived at midnight and decided to travel to the hunting location without giving themselves any time to rest. At 6 o'clock in the morning, the car was near the office at Sati Settlement. Two hours along the mountain road and they began unpacking their bags. The breakfast and adjustment fire took one more hour. My name is Benjamin, I come from Belgium. I am here in the Tian Shan mountain to shoot uh, Maral. Benjamin has easily shot three bullets from 100, 200 and 300 meters with maximum dispersion of 5 centimeters from its Magnum 300 wing rifle. Besides that, the young man has showed good skills in horse riding and good fitness level. We stowed our massive load on the horse and went to seek hunting fortune. One kilometer away from the starting point, in spite of the late hour, we heard Siberian red deer's bell in the forest on the nearest mountain slope. Nicholas blew into the quail pipe and the deer without hesitation responded. That's fantastic! Last year I spent a whole month in Altai and the Siberian red deer responded only three times to me, said astonished Nicholas. One more kilometer and we saw quite a big deer, with two down 700 meters from the path. Unfortunately, our location was not good enough for hiding, and we started to move upwards. At 5 o'clock in the evening, we set up a camp at the height of 2,800 meters above sea level near the spring. Alpine walls were poached by deer and mud bats could be seen everywhere. Spruce forests were stretched along the mountain slopes from the south and the east. On the south, the plateau met assemblage of ice rocks of King e Alatau's main range. Kyrgyzstan's territory lies behind it. Several young Asiatic ibexes were modestly examining our delegation at a distance of 400 meters without any interest toward us. After some time, when we became uninterested to the ibexes, they moved a bit to the side and continued with their routine. We went hunting at 5 o'clock in the morning. Anticyclone has brought light pleasant fair wind from the Taklamakan Desert. It could serve to our advantage if we were traveling along the valley, but we didn't need it here. Blowing down the mountain pass, the wind was carrying forward our smell into the forest and the red deer could smell it one kilometer away. Late in the morning, the breeze blowing up the slope could save us. However, local mountains relief is dissected in a very complicated way, and this law of nature is often not observed. Mountain flank relief, paths configuration, wind direction and game location should be taken into account when planning a hunt. However, at the beginning it is better to spot the game from a safe distance. Siberian red deer is able to smell out a human being from the distance of one kilometer. We plan to divide into two groups and take observant positions on the hilltops with a wide view. However, the red deer have interrupted our plans. Ignoring all rules of fair hunt and direction of the wind, 
The middle-sized buck came from the forest near the camp. The hunt could have come to an end without even starting if Benjamin decided to use this opportunity. Unfortunately, he wanted some action. The buck performed several romantic areas to this quail pipe and slowly disappeared behind the edge of the mountain. One deep bass bell joined the choir in the adjacent gorge. We saw seven bucks during the rest of the evening and two of them were close enough for a good shot. You can judge the level of poaching by game animals' behavior. In the places where poaching is widespread, the animals ride straight away when they notice human at 700 meters distance. In the places where their life during spring and summer is not disturbed by anyone, the animals feel secure, behave carelessly and examine new objects in detail. Just run off several meters and stop, sometimes even come down and continue grazing. Next morning, we rode several kilometers on the periphery of the plateau and saw several red deers, one of which looked quite nice. However, having a good choice of game, the hunters have decided to look for a world record. While we were crossing the open hillside, we have noticed sound of 40 animals 100 meters down our path, paying no attention to us. Wild hawks can't see well from the bottom upwards. The license for additional wild hawk trophy was available, but hunters were excited to find big red deer, so decided not to make a noise. The wolves were running on one of the mountain sides. The great weather has lasted for two days. Sunny during the daytime and moderately cool during the nighttime. However, at 2,800 meters above sea level, the water in the kettle was freezing during the nights. Benjamin was in a great mood. Most of the time we were riding on relatively flattened plateau, watching red deers down here. Even Benjamin's father hasn't had any difficulties with riding. A small cloud appeared on the horizon in the middle of afternoon siesta on the third day and destroyed our cloudless life. White and fluffy cloud has quickly turned into the storm one. The cyclone was approaching. The rain has started and has quickly changed into the powder snow. We've tried not to pay any attention to the snow, hoping to outweigh bad weather in the tents. However, the rangers have insisted on going down to the valley. In the morning, at new place on the gorge floor, we saw several red deers by a spyglass. Looked like the rain scared us more and in spite of all forecasts, the animals were squeaking and chasing each other near the top forest line. The slopes were quite steep and almost impassable on the horse. The rangers have offered to stalk to the red deers by feet from the bottom upwards, but that was too far away. At this point, our guests have understood another peculiarity of our national hunt. The slopes of Kunge Alatau are very steep and horses get tired on the fifth or sixth day of the hunt and are not able to climb long way up in the mountains. Realizing that we could spend ages stalking around gorgeous floor, I convinced Benjamin's father to go fishing for a couple of days if he want his son to return with the trophy. One group went fishing with Benjamin's father. 
running ahead of the story, it is worth noticing that fishing was successful and our cook in the base camp did wonders with fresh trout. Myself, Benjamin and two other guys started to move along barely seen deer's path and storm opposite steep slope. The cyclone has continued its attacks. The rain was changing with snow and once again with the rain. Even Gore-Tex wouldn't help. Huge red deer was laying in the woodside in between the forest wedges at a distance of 600 meters on the opposite slope and cried from time to time. We've assumed that the buck starts moving in the evening and becomes closer to us by 200 meters. At 5 o'clock in the evening, the deer has started moving but has gone in the direction of the mountain edge. In the evening, another big red deer has passed at a distance of 100 meters from us. However, Benjamin has decided not to shoot since the first buck was bigger. In order not to scare away all the red deers, we had to spend that night on the steep slope of the spruce forest. The air was humid, night seemed lasted for ages, but we could hear red deer's bells close to the tent. This was exciting. Benjamin, as he admitted later, couldn't sleep the whole night. On the second day, the red deers were grazing upwards. Several animals have passed us, but not the one we wanted. I think that many hunters on Benjamin's place would shoot the first approaching deer and left for Europe to write memoirs on Facebook till the end of their lives. But Benjamin didn't shoot. He was waiting for his red deer. Our buck was grazing one kilometer up the slope on the open territory. We haven't got too many choices. We could go down to the river or use the chance and stop to his bed. The latter is possible for the experienced hunter, but not for the one who had come to the mountains for the first time. In this situation, Benjamin has chosen the only right decision. He, as a hunter and warrior, has turned the power of his enemy to his advantage. The cyclone was our main enemy, but the enemy had one peculiarity. The animals could not smell out the human during rain, as well as they do during good weather conditions. So Benjamin has decided to stop closer. For several hours during roughness of relief, we were moving around the open slope where the buck was laying. When we reached point black distance, we found out that only 450 meters separate us from each other. The distance was not 100% workable. Just 150 meters, Benjamin was creeping through the bushes of black juniper and vine. We were sitting on the slope and waiting for the shot. As usual, the shot rang unexpectedly. Then another one, and another one again. To tell the truth, this was music to our ears. Wonderful music. We were jumping, laughing and hugging each other under the rain, forgetting that our relations were not that great just an hour before. We were ready to say goodbye to each other in the morning and never meet each other again. But only one shot, one movement of the guy's finger from another country have made us real friends. We have returned back to the camp in the midnight, tired but happy. During dinner, Benjamin has noted that it was the best hunt of his life. The weight of the trophy was 14 kilos. I could have also written that this was my best hunt and stuff like that. Maybe I'll do this later in my life, when I won't be able to go to the mountains and this hunt will be remembered as one of the happiest moments in my life. Meanwhile, I promised not to lie to myself. To tell the truth, after this hunt I thought maybe I should change my activities at my age. But in a little while I've decided to leave this wise decision over two or three years.